G'day friends and welcome to our bushfire safety system install series. This was a massive project that took about five full days to complete and we ended up learning way too much to condense into one video. In the previous two episodes we covered how the trenches were dug and how all of the components were installed. And now this is part three where you'll see the heart of the system which is a Davy firefighter pump. So in this episode, we'll give you an overview of the pump, how it's primed, and also how to add cam locks so that you can disconnect your pump with ease to use elsewhere. G'day guys, and welcome to this quick video on using a Davy firefighter pump like this one. So this is the yellow Davy firefighter pump, which means it's got a single impeller. So the red ones are more hardcore basically, and the yellow ones are the base models. Um, mind you, don't be fooled by it being a base model. This pump can actually provide us with double the amount of pressure compared to what we need to run six sprinklers and two hydrant points. So it's an incredible little machine and it's very, very reliable. We actually uh, had this one flood during the 2022 floods and we had it running in minutes. It's very easy to work on. All of the parts are really uh, easily accessible and you can find a bunch of YouTube videos out there. So if you want to DIY fix things like this, uh, this is the pump for it. And I can't recommend this pump enough after using it for a few months. Uh, it's got the Honda engine, it's bulletproof and uh, all the electronics are sealed off because uh, we've had no electronic issues after the pump went fully underwater. And that's important because when you got the pump next to bodies of water like this, Sometimes when it rains, the water comes up real quick and these pumps get flooded. It's not that rare of a thing to happen to pumps like this. And when it's a unit like this that's designed to be used in basically life or death situations, when you're protecting your home and uh, possessions against bushfires, you want reliability. So if you want to get one of those Chinese pumps that's half the price, sometimes the gamble pays off, but the ones that I've used, they basically had problems in weeks. So. This Honda engine is, uh, yeah, I, I really recommend it. So without further ado, for anybody new to this kind of stuff, um, it took me a little while to learn how to use it. I wish there was more videos out there. So here goes. Here's a basic 101 tutorial for you guys, for someone who's never used a Davy firefighter pump like this one. All right, so here's a closer look at our pump. The yellow part here is made by Davy, and the motor is made by Honda. This one's the Honda GX160. It's actually the base model. But once again, don't be fooled by that. It's very powerful. And when you buy a new one of these, obviously it's not going to come with fuel. So everyone knows how to fuel things up, I think. We won't cover that. But something that's way more important than fuel is making sure that you fill it with oil. It's not going to come with oil. So make sure you get some four-stroke oil and top that up. And the next part is priming the pump. So the way you do that is basically this pipe here that goes to the foot valve at the end. A foot valve lets water in, but it doesn't let it out. So there's two ways really that you can uh, fill this pipe with water. Uh, you can dunk the foot valve in the water like so, and the water will come in and won't come out. So you'll pump it in like that. But ours is all the way over there. So I basically just had the open end of this filled with water and then I connected to the pump. Next thing you need to do is you need to open this cap here and that needs to be filled with water because to prime the pump, it needs to pull the water from all the way down there. It needs to pull it through the system and have it come out. Uh, all of these ball valves and things like that, uh, we'll cover that in more details later, but basically you don't want pressure in the system when you're priming the pump. So why that's important is if I, uh, this line is basically charged or loaded it's got uh, all of the weight of the water from all of those sprinklers up on the hill. So if I open that, you can, uh, you can basically see that there's a lot of pressure and every time I would stop the pump, I would lose all that pressure without the ball valves. So that's why those things are very handy. Uh, cam locks, these things here, they basically allow you to pull the fittings off really easily and it makes the pump more portable so you don't have to unscrew things every time you can just unclip these bits and it all comes off so uh, let's put the gopro on my head and prime this pump like we would for the first time so let's imagine that this one isn't pre-filled with water 
because once it's pre-filled with water it's very easy to start you don't have to prime it basically every time you use it um, I just get it started have the water shooting out of this valve here and then once it's primed I close the valve off open this one and then the pressure runs to the main system but let's pretend we don't have the option to do that so this cap here is what releases all the water in the pump and you should do this every now and then because sometimes uh, all kinds of crap builds up in there and you basically undo this cap to keep it clean and to avoid sediment building up so now that our pump is ready to prime it's got oil in it it's got fuel in it for this next stage i'll put the gopro on my head and you're going to need some kind of vessel of water so what you do is you undo the cap and we fill the pump with water so you want to do it until it's full but here's a, a bit of an insight into how you can cheat with these things um, you know the reason we have this ball valve is if I needed to prime the pump again check this out So basically now I don't have to go over there and scoop up water each time, which is really handy. So we'll close this cap off so that it doesn't drench us. And let's fill the pump with water. That's nice and full now. So what you'll need to do every time you start this pump is you'll need to turn the choke on. So choke comes on like that. And there's a little switch here that needs to be in the on position and after you flick the choke on you don't have to keep it uh, basically choked for very long uh, you can turn it off within seconds if it's not uh, really cold weather so let's give this a pull this one starts first time every time This much pressure tells us the pump is prime. And now we can open this, close this, and the sprinklers are now running. And this is how you turn up the throttle. Yeah, so that's the basic gist of how a pump like this runs. Now, the reason why all of these ball valves are here is because if this one wasn't here, for example, once I got the pump primed, you gotta prime it without having a lot of pressure on it, otherwise it won't, it'll be very hard to prime basically if all of that pressure is pushing the water through, it's gonna be hard for it to prime. So this one, uh, isolates the pressure from the rest of the system and this one here if the pump is primed and the water shooting out you can't get this cap and screw it back on it's too much pressure so you're gonna have to turn the pump off screw the cap on start it again and then you can basically run the system so this prevents you from double handling in that way once it's primed you close this off and the pressure is redirected to the rest of the system and I did mention using cam locks. Uh, basically, this is what they look like. It pops onto one end like so, and then you clip it together like so. So these are very handy because if you don't have the cam locks, you're gonna have to unscrew all these bits to be able to get it off. And sometimes they're so tight that you can't screw them off. Uh, so this one I'm installing here because I would like this end to be able to have a hose pop onto it so that we can carry the pump elsewhere and use the hose. So these cam locks are really good for us because we're using this pump for irrigation purposes, but if yours is just a solo unit used for firefighting, you can also get instead of these, the stores fittings. So they're the ones that firefighters use and they're a little bit quicker to put on and a little bit more convenient. 
But when you're using it for irrigation with two inch poly like that, uh, cam locks do become a little bit more handy. So let's quickly install this and I'll show you guys, it's very simple. It's, it's not hard at all. So we've got our plumber's tape here and we're gonna do a few turns. Smaller fittings require less turns, remember that. So let's do one, two, three turns, keeping it nice and tight. And that should do us for this instance here. So if it's a little bit tight, not too tight, that's perfect. Now we'll go ahead and put the tape on this end here. So this is actually the correct way to put the tape on. Before I was struggling to maintain a lot of pressure because I was holding it like this. But holding it this way, you can get it way tighter, way easier. And that's how we tear it off. And what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna put on this part of the cam lock. And I'm pretty confident that's not gonna leak already, but we'll get our little spanner here and we'll just make sure that everything is nice and tight. So this fitting here is a one inch fitting, by the way. 25 millimeters is the same as one inch. They're interchangeable. And this yellow pump has two one inch outlets and it has two one and a half inch outlets. And the inlet is also one and a half inch. So there we have it guys, it's that easy. We just installed a cam lock. So now we do the same thing on the hose end. And basically when we wanna use our firefighter hose, it just clips on like so. And just the last thing to share with you, a quick consideration that you'll be mindful of when you install these things a few times. So this cam lock here can come with a female thread like this one, meaning this nipple here goes inside it. But you can also get these with a male thread. So then you can skip having this nipple in the middle and you can just have the male thread go straight into the ball valve and you don't need this part. That's really handy when you start to make your fittings consistent. Like for example, all of these, uh, end fittings here can all have a female thread and all of your um, other fittings can have a male thread basically so it makes more sense as you do this a few times so that's my last tip to share with you guys just to be mindful of that because if some of these have a female thread and some of these have a male thread then they might potentially be uh, incompatible with other components in the system but that said metal thread to metal thread they get stuck sometimes so just something to be mindful of if you're building your own system and happy pumping. So this wraps up part three of this bushfire safety system build. And we always find it pretty surreal to see how a crazy plan can go from something in our imagination to becoming real in front of our very eyes. And if you guys get value from our videos, don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to our channel to help these kind of videos reach more people. See you in the next episode.